photosynthesis again. Really? I learned it in the first grade, I learned it in fourth grade, I learned it in seventh grade, I learned it in tenth grade, I learned it in the everything. Every time I take anything, this is photosynthesis. I mean, it's water, it's sunlight, chloroplasts, and green, and something, carbon dioxide, I don't know, there's oxygen in there, it's breathing, the stuff we breathe in and out, something like that. Gosh, we learn about it every year. Learn. Uh, is is a bit of a stretch. I would say it is certainly something that's been covered in a lot of uh, science classes that you've taken. But the question is, like, why is it so important and why does time have to show up again? Well, it answers the question, how does energy and matter? So matter, which is the stuff that is life, and energy, which is the stuff that causes life to be able to do things, um, Photosynthesis is how it is introduced into the world of the living. Without photosynthesis, there'd be no life. Certainly, um, there'd be no mammals because we can't produce our own um, energy. We've got to rely on someone else to do it, something else to do it. Um, and as far as the matter goes, yeah, we can consume uh, matter from others and energy for that matter. But, uh, but <clears throat> matter has to come from somewhere and matter becomes usable to the living world through photosynthesis as does the energy. So a um, couple slides here. So, you know, you know, the equation water plus carbon dioxide and then sunlight gets converted into glucose and oxygen, whatever. So water and carbon dioxide in glucose and oxygen uh, kind of as the products. So this carbon dioxide right here gets converted into the glucose. Then, as we talked about um, in, the, in the assignment and that you all did, uh, many of you did, the glucose gets turned into things like cellulose or lignin uh, inside the plant, which is the structure of the plant. It's the seeds, it's the bark, it's the, uh, the leaves, the you name it. It is the matter of the plant. It's this stuff that helps plant. And it all comes from thin air. It just comes from this. Stuff that stuff that uh, feels inconsequential in weight. But yeah, there it is. It ends up making uh, tons and tons of plant. Um, so in your responses, I really saw two main threads, sometimes both uh, mentioned and sometimes one or the other. <clears throat> and those two threads were the thread having to do with the matter and how matter is, <coughs> excuse me, goes from um, uh, thin air, essentially, the carbon dioxide into the plant. So matter, carbon dioxide, glucose, and then glucose to the structural parts of the plant. Where others got um, a little bit sidetracked, or maybe not sidetracked, but just not as on target to the question, but certainly not inaccurate, was they focused on the glucose, which is the, the source of chemical energy. It's how the sun's energy gets made usable to organize living things. But glucose is an is a energy molecule. And so folks, some folks got focused on just the, <coughs> excuse me, uh, just the energy part and didn't really get to the matter part. So let me show you what I mean by that. So if we think about, let me get this a little bigger. Okay. How matter and energy get into the, the living, basically. Um, it's through photosynthesis. So matter turns into us. Um, originally, well, originally in terms of getting it into life, um, from the carbon dioxide in the air, the process of photosynthesis takes this matter, and a little bit of this matter, but mostly this matter, the carbon dioxide matter, turns it into glucose, and then glucose gets converted into something else that's structural, physical. Some of the glucose, not all of it. So that's how the matter gets into the world of the living or the bioverse. And energy will, energy from the sun, where none of us are uh, solar panels, uh, that'd be great if we were, but we are not. And so this, the energy from the sun, which essentially powers the entire world of the living and a lot of other stuff too, but the energy from the sun has to be made available to 
living thing and the way it does it, it is captured through this process of photosynthesis in the molecule of glucose. And it's just basically, a, it's an energy rich uh, molecule that is the source of a lot of energy stuff, uh, ATP and blah, blah, blah. Whole house of the cell, mitochondria, stuff like that. You know, there's stuff that you recognize but really might not uh, kind of get concept or you might. Um, so matter and energy, which is essentially what life is, organized matter and energy, and really what everything in the universe is, um, become uh, available to the bioverse through photosynthesis. Now, I had asked you to focus this week, and we're going to get to the energy part, but just on the matter part. So um, if we go to just matter, I mean, it's basically the same diagram just with, without energy fo uh, focused on. Uh, matter gets into the into the bioverse or the, the living or really into plants when you have carbon dioxide that gets converted into glucose and then and i don't have this illustrated glucose it's converted into something else in the plant that ends up being structural um, certainly not all the glucose turns into structural stuff in the plant and uh well i'll just leave it at that but that is how matter that's basically how Carbon dioxide goes from the air around us. You can't see or really feel or intuit the weight of or the mass of. And that's how carbon dioxide, that, that molecule that's all around us that I just breathed a bunch of out, uh, millions of molecules, that's how carbon dioxide get, turns into um, essentially giant trees was the uh, original example given, um, which is a little counterintuitive. So that was the focus that I that I wanted your work to do last week. And then, um, so I asked you to do a visual representation of that. And so what I'm going to have you do, and I'll show you in a short little video, so if that's all you really, if you need to refer to it, uh, that'll come next. But what I'm going to have you do is, I'm going to have you look at all of your classmates' um, work, and I'm going to have you sort them into two, two, one of three categories whether you think the, the um, represent or the expression of your classmate uh, was mostly about just the matter, whether it was about mostly energy or, or it, was, it was about both. Um, so I'll show you that in the next video. But really, the goal here is to f focus on the content some, but then also one of the reasons that I'm having you do this is to Take a look at it from a teacher perspective, uh, some of the costs and benefits of having students express things in different ways as a teacher and figuring out how well that lets you know, uh, you know, what, what they're thinking. So that's going to be in the next video. I'll show you how to do that. And that'll be your uh, a bulk of your work.